How you guys doing today? You tuning into MD MD Reviews. And today I'm actually going to be reviewing a movie. Something I've never done before. Um, Tyler Perry, Divorced in the Black. Let's get to it. Divorced in the Black. Many of us have our different opinions when it comes to Tyler Perry films um, over the years. I know that I've, I've um, you know, preferably liked most of his earlier films um, with the Medea character. I always thought that his earlier films were a lot more wholesome and um, gave a message. And oftentimes, Tyler Perry movies, they, they do give a message. Um, this movie, I think, will get more mixed reviews. Hopefully, I would like to say I, I thought it was a good. I thought it was a good movie, but I say that because. The movie, it kind of opens up, you know, just very dramatic um, on a spicy scene. It starts off, you know, with the characters, all the characters in the movie, most of the characters who are going to be involved in the movie um, at Megan Good, um, her husband's brother's funeral in the movie. And kind of to start off, I will say, while I've been to many funerals myself growing up, the pastor... I felt he was kind of he was very insensitive to the things that he was saying about the um the the the, the gentleman being buried, even if even if, if it was true, and from from what from what was said in the beginning of the movie, what the pastor was saying, it, it, it seems like his brother was a career criminal. He was a you know he was a loser, um, really uh somebody that was really up up to no good, and he got what he deserved, which is what the pastor said in the movie as it relates to him being shot. He said he was shot and killed trying to rob um, somebody from the church. And he also alludes that he was just released from prison um, a few days before he got shot uh, um, and killed from, from trying to rob somebody in the church. But the movie itself is kind of, the, the title kind of gives it away. It's about divorce. You know, it's about a marriage, about a, a young lady played by Megan Good, who, who I feel has the illusion that she's a good wife. And I think that she is a good wife in the sense of just her, how she handles her husband. She was she was respectful um, to him in the movie. But I also felt like she was also kind of like uh, a punching bag as well. And, you know, it kind of alludes to the movie um, just how she was raised. And she wasn't really raised. Um, she was raised in a, in a home with a loving father, loving mother. She saw the good example of, of a father and a husband and, and, and her own father. She saw a good example um, of a mother and a um, wife and her own mother. But, you know, the movie kind of, in the movie, I'm going to kind of jump around a little bit, just kind of give con give context. Cause I feel like for some people, they'll watch the movie and be like, well, the, um, the husband in the movie played by Corey was a villain. And I'll say that, yes, he was a villain. Um, I don't really excuse... His behaviors, I don't condone it. I will say that he was, if you actually watch the movie and really kind of see certain things in the movie where it kind of shows the um, the the past and his and pieces a bit of his of his background, you'll realize that he was also he was he was a victim of trauma. Within the first uh, ten to fifteen minutes of the movie, it kind of reveals that when he was a kid, his mother asked him. Um, well, I'll say he was a kid or he was young. His mother asked him to kill his father. You know, so that's kind of um, off the off off the the break of the movie. Like I said, it starts with drama. It's, it's spicy. The uh, the pastor is, um, which is making good father, is saying bad things about um, her husband's brother, who was just um, you know killed and murdered due to robbing somebody from the church. And like I said before, I think it, I feel it was very insensitive. You know, though it was true, I felt like it was very insensitive to say these things about someone. Even if they're true, I felt they could, probably could have been said in a way that didn't really add feel to the fire. Because I feel like that opening scene really kind of set the tone for the movie, and I, I and I do believe that that's what Tyler Perry intended to do. And in that case, it was a good movie. I'm, I mean, it was a good opening scene, but just on a not on, on a personal level. Nobody wants to go, nobody wants to have to bury a sibling, whether it's a mother, a father, a brother, a cousin, a friend, and you're already mourning um, because of their death. And now you have to hear that they were a, 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 a low life, a good for nothing, a criminal, a murderer, and things that you probably already knew. I know that already. I don't, I don't want to be reminded of that while I'm mourning. 
so I, that, that that's one of the parts that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Now, Megan Good's character, um, I felt like she had the illusion that she was being a good wife. And I feel she was a good wife in the sense that, as I said before, she, she was respectful to her husband. She never disrespected him. But I also felt like she probably, she'd never set any real boundaries with him in her marriage because if he did, if she, I'm sorry, if she did, he probably, the relationship probably would have, would have been over a long time ago because of how he treated her, his um, ill treatment towards her, how he kind of spoke to her like she was a dog or, or like an animal or just a nobody, a peasant. So I just felt like that kind of, um, that kind of behavior is like, well, you were a good wife and a good person in the sense that you were respectful to your husband, but were you really, were you really a good wife? Um, and as it relates to, you know, you never setting boundaries with this man in, in your relationship. And in the movie, again, it kind of alludes that she only married him to spite her parents. Um, and I feel like, you know, in life, we know people like that who will marry somebody who probably isn't the best fit for them. And, you know, men, men do it as well when women do it also. But it's like, you know, mom and dad or auntie, uncle was like, you know what, sweetheart, that person is probably not the best fit for you. Um, they just have a lot of issues and things to deal with. I don't think you should probably be with them. And the mentality that they take is, well, it's me against the world. I'm going to marry them. I'm going to marry her or marry him and prove everybody wrong. But in some instance, they're actually right. We're just unwilling to see what they see. And I feel like she became a victim in the movie in the movie she was she was she was a victim but from my perspective i feel like she made herself a victim because of the red flags that were mentioned um from her father and her mother in the past and just the things that kind of what the what the small town kind of knew knew of these brothers and and, and her husband's mother is like well these are not good people they're they're miserable they have no substance of good in them and I feel like, like most people who love somebody, she probably thought, well, I can change him. You know, I, I, I could, uh, I could, you know, I could, um, you know, I could help him. Cause I think one of the aspects of, of, of him that I, I think she was attracted to, um, or what I would see is that what I would say is that maybe she felt she could help him cause he w it was, it's, it's, um, it's, it's apparent in the movie that he was, he was troubled. He was a troubled, um, you know, young man. He was just a troubled person, you know, but um, I felt that, you know, she kind of made herself a victim. Um, again, um, I don't I don't condone any of the abuse uh, of the mistreatment that he, he did to her in the movie. I myself, someone who's been married for almost eight years now, uh, been my wife for almost 10 years. You know, I've never physically put my hands on my wife in, a, in an abusive manner or a slap punch or kicker. No, I've never, I've never done that. You know, um, so I just think that no woman, should, should, no woman should be treated that way or, or man. But also in the movie, um, Megan's Megan, good character, her her friend, husband. I also felt like he was also put in a very difficult situation because he was friends with um, Megan's good husband. And he also had to kind of um, care and guard his his wife's. Um, um, emotional feelings and physical safety from the um, the character played by making making a good husband who was kind of a, a, a lunatic in the movie. Um, you could tell he was mentally disturbed. Probably had some mental health things that he you know need, needed to, to deal with, but all that kind of played a part in the movie with um, him doing things that made the wife um, put the put the wife in situations where the um, the the friend's wife making making good making making good friend um in the movie um put her in situations where she probably was in situations that were she very probably unsafe for her in the movie the husband um making good husband was he was stalking her coming to her job he came to the house a few times after they were divorced and it was like what are you doing here man so you, you could tell all, all off off the break that the movie was kind of gonna kind of be spicy you know during the movie she also she reconnects with uh i guess a high school I don't want to say sweetheart because it, it loses the movie that her and her 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 now then husband 
who also got divorced in the movie Husband, um, where they did, also dated in high school, but her and the the um the the, the, the nice guy in the in the town had like maybe had like a a, 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 a slight um fling that never really got an opportunity to really explore that because of you know um the movie they say that her uh, making good's husband and and his brothers jumped the man and put him in the hospital when they were like in, in, in high school. So he never got an opportunity to really experience um, the relationship with making good. Um, you know, you know, you see in the movie where some things are revealed and her, her mother kind of have a heart to heart because her mother finds a letter or her mother finds a list that her friend um, wrote to her, gave it to her and said, Hey, since you guys have been married, I wrote down all the things that he's done to you you know, all the heinous things that he's done to you and, you know, what you've kind of let him do and you kind of endured. And so I guess once the husband, they, um, about 10 to 15 minutes in the movie that they're all going to dinner, the, um, making good in her husband and her friend and, and his husband and her husband and, you know, her husband's off the break, you know, he, uh, she comes from home from work before they go to dinner and he's like, we got to be there by a certain time. And she's like, yeah, just give me like, you know, about 45 minutes and then we, you know, we, we can go ahead and we'll be there. But, while she come out of the shower, the husband, her husband's already gone. He went to the um, the place to meet the um, the friends for dinner already, and they're like, "Well, where's where's your wife?" You know, well, she'll be here when she get here. You know what I'm saying? She took too long, so I left her. So then, already again, another spicy moment in the movie. Then she finally comes to to dinner, making good care to comes to dinner with her husband there and the, her friend and her husband, and then her husband just you know he just he's a firecracker. He just starts saying stuff out his mouth. He's very loose with his lips. He's like, you know, I want a divorce, blase, blase. And so from that part of the movie, she then kind of drives um, home to her parents' house where the kind of the beginning of the movie starts um, real quick. She's in a small town. The small town is about an hour and a half from from Atlanta where, where she lives, her husband live and work. So during dinner, the husband says, I want a divorce. She kind of, you know, gets teary-eyed and um, her, her friend gives her a ride home and from there, she kind of gets in her car, you know, she cries and she drives back home um, to her parents' house where the beginning of the movie takes place. So that's kind of where the the real tone for the movie is set. And you kind of see making a good character kind of changes from this docile, damsel in distress, um, I'm a good wife, to no, I'm better than this. I deserve better. And she begins to take ownership, you know, of her, of her life and of, you know, she basically realizes that I've wasted my life. I've, I've allowed this man to treat me like a, like a punching bag. I've allowed, you know, just to be, you know, a, a floor he could step on. So she kind of, you know, ha- has a few conversations with, with her parents in, in different um, in the different parts of the movie when she goes back home and they kind of have a conversation with her. And she kind of begins to realize, you know, you know, really who her husband is. Um, what she allowed him to do to her, and from there, you know, the, um, this this character that, again, she had a, a slight uh, fling with when they were in high school with the movie alludes allude to. It never really goes into details too too heavy, but it does mention that they had a slight fling. It, it's apparent in the movie that he likes her. He's always liked her, and so he becomes another um, kind of uh, a protector, um, good guy. Uh, role in the movie and he and he is for the most part he is he's a real mild manner um kind guy to her and you can tell he's always you know been in love with her but he but in the movie he she also alludes that he's always been been respectful of her marriage to um to the the gentleman the character that Corey plays so you know for the most part he's a very respectable uh, old school traditional guy you know um in the sense of that he's just respectful but he's he's in love with her you know so um from there, they kind of have a, a kind of few interactions um, while she's still home in uh, um, in her small in the small town. But she kind of you know kind of kind of gives them the cold shoulder. And when it's of the movie, I guess you know they have a um, they have a they have a conversation in in the in the, in the um, pet store or um, what's the wall, the supply store where her, her her father goes to get supplies for his farm, and he says to her, you know. As someone, who, as someone who's been through divorce, I understand, you know, the different emotions attached to it. I understand, I understand what it does to you. If you ever want to talk, if you ever want to, you know, just have somebody have an ear to listen to you, you know, give me a call, you know. So um, she kind of gives him a cold shoulder a few times while she's still in town. And eventually, before she goes back home to Atlanta, she does, they, they, um, her, 
her mother, her father, and her go to the uh, the small town fair that's in town, and she does kind of um, finally talk to him, and they have they, they have a, a, a drink. Um, um, they go for a walk, uh, I guess, in, in a field somewhere in his pickup truck, and you know, with the blankets and sheets kind of spread out. Um, they just talk and kind of just share um, share some things from that happened kind of in the encounters in their past. And she has um, she has a um, few drinks of whiskey. And she tries to come on to him, but he's like, "Hey, listen, I know you're in a vulnerable state right now. You know, um, I, you know, I, I've always liked you, but she kind of takes it as, oh, you don't want me. You don't think I'm, you know, I, I, I'm beautiful enough.' Because early on, um, when she was driving, the beginning of the movie, when she was when she was driving back, her friend was driving her back to her house from the from the restaurant after her husband said, "I want a divorce." Um, she was like, "Well, you know, I'm almost forty. Who wants who wants a forty year old woman?" Um, you know, who's going to think I'm pretty. So I guess that meant that kind of was still stuck in her head when she was having a conversation with him. He's like, no, 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 no. It's not that, you know, you're beautiful. I've always wanted you. I've always, you you know, loved you. But right now, you know, I, you know, I just understand that you're in a vulnerable place and I don't want to take advantage of you. And I don't want it to, I don't want our first encounter to be this, you know, you drunk and having a conversation, you're hurt, you're about to get divorced. So it's like, I don't, I don't want that. You know, I kind of just want it to be something that's going to be, um, meaningful and, and something that we can remember, you know. So I think that they kind of have that um, and that scene after that she kind of drives back home to uh, Atlanta where she works and lives, where her house is. And from there, you know, the husband, as I say, who's played by Corey, he's just, he wanted the divorce, but he's like, uh, I think his brothers sent him a picture of her and the other guy at the fair and in his mind, he's like, oh, you always wanted him. You always wanted to be with him. You were just, you, you never wanted me. But the truth of the matter is, no, she wanted you. She wanted, she was with you and loved you and hoped that one day you would change and get the help that you needed because of the um, the, uh, the trauma that you suffered as a kid. But you never chose to get that help. You never chose to um, allow yourself to be vulnerable to your wife and to accept the help that she was saying that you needed to get. But, you know, people, when they're always, when, when, you know, you, he's a, he's a narcissist, you know what I'm saying? He blames her for the divorce and you never wanted me. He was like, you asked for the divorce. I didn't ask for the divorce. You asked for the divorce. So it's, 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 it's kind of interesting, but his character, he's, he's very stockish. Um, he does seem a bit, um, mentally unstable. Well, not, he doesn't seem he's mentally unstable, so it's just different things. Once they back in town, he shows up, you know, at her at her home. After the divorce takes place, he shows up the next day at her at her home in the morning. After she's just because uh, after she gets a divorce, her friend throws her like a divorce party, and of course the guy from her hometown comes to Atlanta, and he's there and kind of surprises her. So they kind of hit it off, and they you know now that she's divorced, officially divorced, they go back to her place and they cause have sex and. Um, the next morning she gets up to go to work and the guy's still in her bed uh, asleep and she goes downstairs about to, about to go to work and her ex-husband is in the kitchen eating a bowl of cereal. <laughs> so it was like, okay, I like this joint. You know, so, but, uh, um, you know, long story short, that they get into it. He's like, this is my house and I ain't going nowhere. And he goes upstairs and sees the other guy in the bed and she has to scream to wake him up. I'm like, man, this is like a bad situation going, going worse. But, you know, the, uh, he gets, he kind of, Gets to get gets a few good hits in on the guy, but the guy is bigger than him, big country, strong Bama, big country dude, you know. So uh, you know he kind of gets a good, good hits, few good hits on him, and then the um the guy that she previously just slept with the night before kind of kind of gets a good hits on him. He finally chokes him out, and the husband passes out, and they making good character. You, you you see for a moment where her 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 character changes, or I'll see I'll, I'll say you see something come out of her character that, that had never came out of her character before in the movie where she actually is like, she's past the point now of like, I'm not taking no more ish, no more drama. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of being a punching bag and she's just losing it. And she drag like she drags her passed out ex-husband who's passed out from being choked out by the guy she slipped up with the night before on the ground. She drags him down the stairs and on the floor and drags him outside of the house. And you see the, uh, she's like, help me out. And the other guy, he, he helps her out. Like, he's it's crazy. But then they, you know, the guy picks him up and puts him in his, puts him in his truck, which is a parking lot. And you know, from there, if you thought, if you thought she thought that would 
I guess, uh, tame the husband or kind of make him go away. Nah, not quite. He it, it only got worse, you know. So, um, of course, from there you can kind of allude, you kind of know the rest. Um, watch the movie. He he starts talking to her. She eventually, unfortunately, ends up having having to kill her husband because um, I don't think I don't think his actions would have stopped. I, I, I think that unfortunately, somebody's 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 gonna die, only because of the, the mental instability of the persons or characters in the movie and their their unwillingness to really accept reality. Like, hey, this is over. I'm a terrible person. Um, I've been a, a, a terrible husband to my wife. But, you know, finally, you know, unfortunately, like I said, the husband does end up getting killed. You do you do see in the movie where the husband did a few things and they went to the police on many different occasions, but they could never prove it. So at this point, Megan Good's character, she actually provokes him. She takes advantage of the fact that he's um, mentally unstable and kind of gonna keep coming after her. So she sets him up. You know, her father a day before gave her a bunch of guns um, cause the, and, and installed some cameras in her house. So because she basically realized he he he's not gonna stop. You know, he's not gonna stop until he kills me. Cause I think the, the um the draw for her was when her father went. Um, her ex-husband's mother house to confront her ex-husband because he had um, came to the grocery store while her father was in Atlanta putting um, putting up cameras in her house and things, and he kind of um, pushed her mother or you got in her face. So that that was the draw for him. Any man, you know, any man's not gonna any man who loves his wife and children are not gonna let you just push him push him around. So the, he was a passing. He he lost it. He cussing and grabbed his shotgun and his pistol. He went over there. He's he ready to kill, like kill Bill. He ready to kill some folks. But um unfortunately um he was talking trash to her ex husband and her three and his three brothers were behind him walking slow and he didn't even know, you know, they were behind him and luckily they didn't kill him. They beat him up pretty bad, shot him and put him in the hospital. He ended up in the hospital. So I think for that, that was the final draw for Megan Megan good character. That was the final draw. She had she was like, this ain't gonna stop to somebody die and it's like if, if he wants to fight I'll give him a fight so she calls him like hey I'm going home I'm about to make love to you know the so and so and basically in other words he gonna beat it up like like you never could and he's a, you know and she kind of hangs up and so that's all, that's all he needed so she baited him because she wanted him to come to the house she wanted him to beat beat her up so if she killed him because she, she, she already had a restraining order on him but you know and most and, and most Instances, even in real life, even if somebody has a restraining order on you and they're and they're in your vicinity or in your presence, the cops will come and arrest them. But for him, he was he was far gone mentally, and it was you know he was going to kill somebody. So he comes there, and he's talking to her, and they're kind of having a, a, a intense exchange. And he pulls out a gun and puts it on the table, and you know from there, she says things to provoke him on purpose because she wants she wants him to hit she wants him to hit her because she wants she she wants to kill him she wants him she she I'm sorry she wants to kill him but she knows she can't do so she can't just shoot him because he came in the house it was like well you could just call the cops so she realizes that you know if he if he comes into my house and I provoke him to attack me and he starts beating me up and I grab one of the guns that that, that I have stashed where I can kill him and it, and it be justified and that's what the, her character of course does the only thing I'll say that. Where what I thought I thought to myself while watching that scene is that well, what if it went terribly wrong, and because he was mentally unstable, he just shot her, came in the house and blow, just shot her. You know, but I think oftentimes when you're when your emotions are high, and you're not really thinking things through, you you don't really think about these things. But like I said, but you know, um, luckily things worked out to to her favor. He attacked her. Um, beat her up pretty bad, and, and she eventually, you know, she eventually, um, when she when she finally did grab her her shotgun off the counter that was hidden, um, because he and, and through all that through through all through, through him beating her through him beating her up and uh, manhandling her in the kitchen and throwing her over the counter and stuff, he put his took his gun off off the, off the counter and put it back in his put it behind him in his belt, so he was you know kind of you know so when she got her shotgun, he stood up of course stood up and was and you know. Basically, she was like, "Don't reach, don't reach for that gun," and when he reached for it, she sh- she shot him with the shotgun and blew him away, and, and killed him. You know, so um, it was a um, it was it was a good movie. 
I was gonna say it was powerful, but I don't think it. I don't. It, it wasn't powerful. It was. I guess you could say it was a typical Tyler Perry movie. And like I said, when many people see this movie, they're gonna have different different um, thoughts and different views about the movie. But one of the things that I take from the movie, as somebody who you know, um, again, been married for eight years, I grew up in a house with physical and verbal um, abuse, not to me, but to my mother. And, you know, so I'm able to actually kind of recognize, see it from different perspectives. You know, the one perspective was that, um, unfortunately, regardless of how we feel about um, making a good husband in the movie, he was he was a victim of trauma. He was. You know, his um, you could see in the movie where his, his mother had a had a had a like, like a unhealthy grasp on him and his and his brothers. She would say jump and they would just how high. You know, and all throughout the movie you see this multiple times. So he was manipulated by his mother when he was a young kid or a young you know young young child to kill his father. So the, the grasp that his mother has on him, you see in the movie, it, it, it's strong. It's strong. It's kind of like it's very much unhealthy. And we see that with a lot of, um, even we see that, that we see that with a lot of women and their mothers or men in, the, in their mothers, where it's like, it's kind of like an un, un, unhealthy relationship that you guys have where I'm your wife or I'm your husband. I say something and your parent would say, no, you just do that. You go, go and do that. So it was, it was, it was a very unhealthy relationship that he had with his mother. She was manipulating him and his brothers, um, her, her husband. Like I said, I'm very sympathetic to his character. Because most of the time in movies, they have to have a villain, a hero, and a victim. You know, and unfortunately, her husband, I think that in my perspective, he was both a victim and he was a villain. But most villains are victims. You know, if you watch the Joker movie, came out a couple years ago, and you really see his how he grew up, you realize that what they, what the things that they endured as as children and the trauma that they kind of endured um they never got healed from it made them the villain it made them the villain that they are and sometimes they don't recognize that I need help it doesn't matter if you tell them the wife tells them the whoever tells them they don't recognize that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a effed up individual I need help I was a victim of trauma I need help they don't realize that so yes I'm very sympathetic for her husband's role um, in the movie and, and his character. Um, but again, I don't condone anything that he did as far as the, vis- the, the verbal and physical abuse to his wife. I don't condone it at all. But I'm very sympathetic of what he, what he, what, what he went through. And I feel like when you watch a movie like that, I have to consider the fact that he, he was a victim. You know, he was a victim of trauma. And unfortunately, because he was unhealed and never got the help that he needed to get, it, 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 made, him, it made him a monster. You know, so I think that um, making good um, character, I feel like she played a phenomenal role. Um, I I liked the, I liked the um, the the change in her character. How her character character kind of got her confidence and got her fight back in her. Because throughout the movie, like I said, she was a punching bag for the husband verbally. You know, and it was good to see that her character found that that fight in her found that Mike Tyson in her uh, found that found that Batman in her it, it, it was good to see that you know that was I, I, that part of the movie I really enjoyed when she began to you know you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to fight back not physically but just far as like with with recognizing who she was and who I am and how I was raised I wasn't raised to be treated like trash I wasn't raised to be floor somebody's floor mat so I was I was very excited to see that how her character kind of stepped into that 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 role and and, and kind of grabbed her got her power back. I was very um, excited to see that. I also enjoyed that the um, the father was her her father in that movie was a man who loved his wife and it was a man who was willing to die for his wife and his daughter. You know, I love my family. He was even he was even willing to kill. You know, um, oftentimes that's what you see about men is that her father seemed like a very calm. Kind of bit of a firecracker, you know. Like I said, because he was the pastor at the beginning of the movie, said what he said about her her ex husband's um, bro, um brother who got killed. So he was he was a bit of a firecracker, but he was also a man who loved his family and cherished who who cherished his family. So I like that about the movie. Um, the guy from the hometown, you know, uh, you all know people like that who this girl or man leave town. Um, but they have a have a somebody who always was in love with them, always who always wanted to be with them, but never could because whatever situation. And sometimes they end up reconnecting sometimes most of the time they actually don't 
they only they only reconnect in movies, you know. But I, I have personally seen situations and heard situations where people have gotten married and um, had somebody that they were sweethearts with, but things didn't work out in their high school or middle school, and years, fifteen years later, they reconnect and get married and kind of rekindle everything back, and it's like they never left lost a step. So I, I, I definitely um, I enjoy his role. He was a, he was a protector. He respected her. Um, you know, he didn't take, he didn't take advantage of her when she was at her most vulnerable point, which most men probably would have just smashed and been out. You know, I also I was telling my wife that um, Megan Good, her friend's husband, um, I felt he did a very great job at protecting his wife. I do think that some people will look at his character as probably being weak. I don't see how they could, but I could I could definitely see people would say that. Oh, he's he's no, he was put in a very difficult situation. He was he was given the responsibility to protect my wife, her emotions and protect her physically and her sanity, but also the guy was his friend. Like the guy was his friend. He just lost his he just lost his brother. He was mourning. He probably knew his friend's childhood um, traumas that he went through. So I feel like he was put in a very, I feel like out of everybody in the movie, I feel like he was probably one of the people that I felt like was put in the most difficult situation as far as him having to manage his wife, manage his wife's um, friend, and manage his 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 own friend, which is the, the, the wife's friend, ex-husband. Like it was, it, it was I felt, like he, I felt like that character did a phenomenal role. Cause like even even in real life scenarios, um, we as as a man and as a father, we're put in situations where I, I have to. My first priority is to protect my wife and her emotions and guard her emotions and her safety. But also, this is my family or this is my brother, or this is my sister. So I'm trying to gotta navigate that as well without stepping on my wife's uh, foot or making her feel like I'm not there for her. So it's it's a very difficult role that that a man has to play, and oftentimes than not. I think that in real life scenarios I've seen where it really hasn't worked out too well, you know? Um, and I think that, you know, in, in most situations what I've seen is that men choose just, they just, they just ultimately just choose their wives, which I think is the right thing to do. You know, if, if a situation becomes um, too difficult and too much for me to bear, the only, the only, the only responsibility that I really have is to my wife. I live with my wife. I live with my kids. I don't live with my friend, my brother, my sister. I don't, I don't live with them. And I feel like, in the movie, that's really kind of where making making good husband was a, a terrible husband that he always sided with his mother and his brothers. Where it's like, this is your wife, man. Like, she's your first responsibility. You know, not not these bamas. You don't live with them. You live with her. You making love to her. You sleep in the bed with her. You, you know, y'all paying bills together. Your first responsibility is to your wife, not to your your brother or your mother. Now, if they were Z's and need help, that that'd be different. But the fact that he was always be able to be always be able to be manipulated by his mother and his brothers was like he was a very weak minded man, you know, um, and un- understandably so. He you know he was weak minded with the, without um, rightfully so, you know, because of what he endured. He was rightfully so he was, but um, the whole movie, I, I I loved the movie. I think it was a great talking point for conversations for us to have in, in the black community um, as it relates to like. Why? Why do men and women who come from good, good families, as a way to having a mother and a father in a home, why do you end up with, with? Why do you not trust trust the judgment of your mother and father? And why would you pick somebody who clearly is a, a, a no good, a no good loser? Why do you not trust the judgment of your mother and your father? You know, and also again, you see that somebody who comes from a, a, a home of dysfunction. And um, of, uh, comes from trauma. Like, why as why as people do we not feel the need? Like, why do you not understand that when I was a kid, I saw some things that I probably shouldn't have saw. I saw my mom beat my dad. Or I saw my dad beat my mom. Or I saw my mom cheat on my dad. Or saw my dad cheat on my. Mom. Why don't Why do you not realize that you need help? That I, I need. I had these are traumas that I'm dealing with, and they're affecting my adult life. Why do you not? You know, see that you need help, you know, and I think that sometimes the the inability for people to to get help is really what becomes their downfall, as in the is in seeing the movie with making good, um, um, husband's character. You know, it was a downfall. You know, so I um, I really, really, really liked um, uh, making good 
her friend's husband um, role. Um, Because you see that in everyday life, everyday marriage, where the man has to navigate the emotions of his wife um, and the other parties of his uh, of his um, with his friend, which is making good um, character husband slash ex husband in the movie. And I think he did a phenomenal role. And ultimately, I think that it came to the point where he just he, he realized that I, had, I have to choose my wife. You know, so I really think that I like the I like the conflict that that character had in the movie. And finally, you see when um the, with the last straw when he came to their house and um making good was with the was with was with the was with the guy that she had just slept with in the beginning of the, in, the, in the movie and her guy from the whole hometown. They were all hanging out in, in the friend's um in the friend's husband in her backyard, and the husband came there. Her, her ex husband came there, like on a stockish type vibe and off the chain, and really just like a loose cannon. And finally, that's when you see the husband kind of just, you know, he didn't like he didn't do it. He he wasn't like he wasn't like he wasn't like violent or like I'm I'm gonna beat you up. No, he just finally he just like you know what enough is enough. Leave my house, you know, and don't come back. You know what I'm saying? But I think that sometimes as and me and my wife has had this conversation over the years, is that sometimes as a man, a black man. You're put in situations where it's like, I could actually handle this with violence, or I could actually just handle this with like, I could be assertive and be stern with the person, but stay on my ground verbally. And I think sometimes women's perspective was, is like, well, you should have knocked him out. You should have beat him. It's like, but that could cause a whole other chain reaction of things that, that happen that you can't foresee. Let's say her friend's husband would have beat him up and threw him out of the house. And he's, then let's say he, he was going to work the next morning and, he, and, and then he shot him up. Oftentimes, violence begets more, more violence. And if you have to, if, if a man is ever put in a situation where, we, situation where he has to put his hands on a, on a man, they don't, we don't hesitate to do so. But that's never going to be the first choice because, again, if you put your hands on a person nowadays, you better be prepared to kill them or, or, or run the risk that they might come back and kill you. So it's like violence is never is never really a, a first option that I would choose only because I understand the ramifications behind it. Even if I beat you up, you know your pride might might, might be wounded, and, he, and you come back shooting. And so a disagreement that turned into a a, a physical altercation now becomes a, a, a murder. And for what? We could have just resolved it. You know, I told you to get to get the f out of my house or get out of here, or you scram and that be the end of it. Versus me trying to put my hands on you and then you. Your, that that man's that man's pride is wounded, and he comes back shooting my wife or shoot me. It's like you know, so I think that the um, it was a, it was a very um, it was a very good movie for great conversation and to raise uh um uh just alerts on many different many different you get you can analyze each character um and get a, and get like I, I'll say two weeks of content for relationships or in marriage out of these characters and even in the movie. It alludes that the 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 uh, making good friend husband cheated on her, but they kind of resolved the, the, those things and they worked through that. So again, the movie was the movie was full full of content, full of of great um, content for people to have who are in relationships and who subscribe to marriage. You know, and again, um, Dell from Indie Indie Reviews. Me and my wife have a podcast about this love, which is why I felt so strongly about reviewing this movie. Normally. I don't review movies, and I probably won't review another movie um, unless it kind of unless unless I see it's pivotal or uh, I see the value in it, like I did this one, you know. So, um, was it a good movie? Yes, it was a typical Tyler Perry movie, but I, I valued what different things I got out of it. You know, I just didn't look at it. I didn't look at it from just oh, her husband's abusive. No, because many different factors played into him being abusive. You know. I had simply for I had simply for him. I understand her role, um, and mom, dad, friends. It was it was a great movie, you know. Again, Dale from Indie Reviews. Until next time, please please like and subscribe. Um, if you if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe to more content. Again, I usually do product reviews, <laughs> but I had to do this movie. I, I really enjoyed it. Till next time, peace.